Well, joining our discussion on divorce and matrimony in China is Roseanne Lake. She's an author and journalist. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. Always. So, um, divorce had been on a rise until the introduction of this law this year, mandating that 30-day cooling-off period. The 70% drop seems quite dramatic. Uh, do you see that you know, lasting long term? Uh, well, the 70% drop is probably largely the result of people not wanting to go through the meetings that they have to take during this cooling off period, right? And what we're seeing in terms of this cooling off period, I know a lot has been made about it in the news in terms of, oh, this is outrageous, you know, how could you impose this on people? For China, it's actually really nothing new. So back in the days when, you know, people worked in work units, um, a lot of times you had to ask permission for the head of your work unit in order to get forced. Mm. And I remember interviewing you know, people who had this very odd <laughs> position, you know, whether being able to decide whether or not a couple could get divorced. And they would say, a lot of times we would say, oh, we were missing some of the paperwork, and, and then they would just stay together. And I remember visiting marriage bureaus in Beijing that also very curiously double as divorce bureaus and interviewing some of the people there and them saying, yeah, you know, they come in for the paperwork and we say, oh, our printer isn't working or we need to do something, and they just never come back, right? So this you know, it could just be that there's there's a very heated moment and people decide, well, right? we're, we're, that's it, it's the end, we're divorcing. And then after some time, they realize, oh, maybe it's not worth the hassle or maybe it's not what they really want to do or maybe relatives talk to them or maybe the guilt of having, you know, of, of children they may have kicks in and it just doesn't happen. Um, I feel like this is something that's been going on for a very long time in China. It's just taken a different form as a result of this very formalized cooling off role, which I think has existed in various different forms uh, throughout the years, throughout the decades, actually, in China. Right, so it's red tape that's saving marriages. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the marriage rate, you know, the actual marrying has been on a sharp decline as well uh, in China. What accounts for all of this? I really think it's about, I think it's driven by women, and I think it's about quality of marriages, right? So for the first time ever, essentially, we're looking at the first generations of women for whom marriage is actually discretionary, mm -hmm. right? For their mothers and for their grandmothers, there was no choice. You couldn't survive as a single woman. Back to those work units, there was no housing in work units for unmarried people, so you couldn't get a job if you didn't have a husband. For the first time in, you know, ever, really, we're seeing these generations of women who can choose whether or not they want to get married. And and as a, they're also, they also happen to be much more educated and they're financially independent. And so quality of marriage means a lot to them. It's not just about, okay, let's get married for the sake of getting married. There, there are actually some, you know, popular online dating platforms in China that take surveys. And consistently, you know, women uh, always report that a quality of marriage is much more important for them. And they'd rather remain single if that quality isn't there. Whereas men are more likely to say, ah, you know, if, if, the, if the marriage is okay, if the girl is okay, I'm, I'm happy to marry her, right? So I really think think it's being driven by women and this new option they have to, to get married if they wish to and to remain single if they wish to. I, I, Rosanne, it's interesting. You know, I'm hearing about this quality of marriage you talk about, but the concept of family, and, and with that, marriage is so foundational to Chinese culture. Uh, you know, as women become more powerful and become more present in the workplace, are we witnessing a seismic shift in values, or is this just more of a case of economic factors at play? It's both. I mean, what you say about the family being the foundation of everything is very, very true. And I know that these women tread a very fine line of, you know, wanting to please their families and wanting to fit in and, and wanting to form families themselves. And also just sort of wanting to make sure that they have the quality of life that they want and that by entering a marriage, their quality of life doesn't deteriorate because it's with the wrong person or it's because with the, it's with somebody that isn't respecting, you know, their educational goals or their professional pursuits. And it is. I mean, I mean, we are, I wouldn't call it, it, it is a seismic shift, shift in the sense that, you know, all of a sudden these things are discretionary and it's a slightly less seismic shift because there's always that tug of family and that, you know, second guessing of maybe this is something I should do because the neighbors, my parents, my classmates, everybody expects this of me. Mm. But, you know, deep down, we're seeing women sort of tune in to, to what they feel and it's kind of like if, if this doesn't work for them, they won't do it. Um, although it comes at a price, of course, of, you know, disappointed parents in many, many cases who cannot swaddle that grandchild that everyone right. over 60 in China is very keen to do. 